Edmund Ironside was born in around 990 and ruled as King of England from April to November 1016, just seven months. He was the third son of Ethelred, the King of England. Ethelred was about 24 when Edmund was born, and at that point had already been on the throne for around 12 years, and he'd continue ruling for another 23 years after that. When he was born, Edmund wasn't in direct line to be king, because he had two older brothers, Ethelston and Egbert, but both elder brothers died before they could be crowned. Instead, when Ethelred died in 1016, Edmund, then around 26 years old, was declared king. Let's take a look at where he fits in our Kings and Queens timeline. He's here, ruling 50 years before the Norman invasion. At the point Edmund was born, Viking raiders had been plaguing the English for decades, and when he was around 12 years old, his father Ethelred instigated the St. Brice's Day Massacre in 1002, a fateful decision that potentially helped to drastically alter the course of English history. For a more detailed explanation, we recommend you watch our previous video on Ethelred the Unready. Very briefly though, Ethelred had tried to pay the Vikings off using tens of thousands of pounds of gold and jewels, the equivalent of millions of pounds in today's money. Paying them off, however, seems merely to have encouraged them to carry out more raids. Another solution of Ethelred's was to create a political union with the Duchy of Normandy, perhaps in the hope of getting their support, or, at the very least, preventing the Vikings from receiving support or shelter from the Normans. Ethelred created this political union in 1002 by marrying the sister of the Duke of Normandy, Richard II, when Edmund was just 12. Eleven years later, in 1013, when Edmund was about 23, Swain Forkbeard invaded England, partly to avenge the death of his sister in the St. Brice's Day Massacre. He chased Ethelred out of the country and declared himself king. Rather than fleeing to Normandy with their father, Edmund and his older brother Ethelston stayed in England, even after Swain was declared king in 1013. Edward was close to his brother, and this is reflected by the fact that when Ethelston died in 1014, he bequeathed Edward his sword, which had once belonged to the Mercian king, Offa. Swain Forkbeard died just 41 days after being crowned king of England. His son Canute then tried to get himself crowned king, but Ethelred returned from exile and launched a surprise attack, forcing Canute to flee. When his father Ethelred died in April 1016, the kingdom was divided. In London, Edmund was declared King of England, but in other parts of the country they chose Canute. The two kings went head to head in a series of inconclusive battles. Later, in 1016, they divided the country between them. Edmund took Wessex in the south, Canute took Mercia in Northumbria. The division of England into two kingdoms wouldn't last long though. On the 30th of November 1016, Edmund died. We don't know how he died, but there are conflicting accounts that he was killed. In one version, he was killed while sitting on the toilet, either through multiple stab wounds or from a crossbow fired at a distance. In other accounts, Edmund is thought to have died of battle wounds or of some disease. Either way, Edmund's death meant that Canute was finally declared king of the whole of England. Edmund was buried at Glastonbury Abbey, next to his grandfather, the former King Edgar. The abbey was destroyed 500 years later, during King Henry VIII's dissolution of the monasteries. It's likely the contents of his tomb were plundered. In our next video, we'll take a look at the life of Edmund's successor, Canute. Please hit the subscribe button below to receive an alert when we upload our next video. You can also help us to keep making these videos by supporting us via Patreon, using the link below.